Next question is from N.P. Deering. What exercises do you recommend to increase rotational power? Okay, so ro rotation, obviously twisting, right? And mm -hmm. power is speed. So the strength, strength is that low gear uh, type of movement, right? So like I'm grinding through a heavy squat or a deadlift. That's strength. Mm -hmm. Power is strength with speed. So this is uh, athleticism usually involves a lot of power. So training power with rotation means you're going to train, first of all, if you do train for power, make sure you you got good skill, good technique, right. and good stability. If you don't have any of those and then you go fast, you're going to probably hurt yourself. And, well, and I also think a big misconception with power is that, you know, you're you're also you're you're also trying to be super controlled on the eccentric part. And so, uh, you know, some of the best exercises for rotational power for me are where I, I take a, a medicine ball, for instance, and I'm and I'm tossing it in in a rotational fashion and getting rid of it. So I, it's it's as much of my maximal effort as possible from the beginning to the end, and then I'm done, and then I'm recovering and composing myself. But um, for the most part, it's it's about that pure exertion. It's it's on command. It's it's you know being able to summon that force and then and then uh, display that power all at once. Yeah. Now, I, like, what, what, I like bands for this, by the way. What 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 is your thoughts, Justin, on on and where does uh, anti rotational work contribute to rotational power and strength? Like, is that is that a, a, a must-have component to that or just as valuable in training that? If oh, yeah. No, I, I, honestly, I think that that's a little bit more in the strength uh, portion of, of the rotational strength of, because you want to make sure that you have that kind of control. And so when you're going through these movements, you know how to you know, find your way back to homeostasis, like find your balance and grounding um, so you can get more explosive. So you have to be able to build that foundation. So then, you know, when, you, when you're moving on the field, you're explosive, you can reorient orient and find yourself and be able to stabilize. So you have to be able to slow down that rotation at the same time. Um, but when you're just working on pure power moves, um, I, I think, it, you know, with kettlebell swings or anything like that, getting rid of the kettlebell, I think is always a better option or slamming a ball, uh, it, you know, and then regrouping, composing, and then doing that same uh, type of movement again. So what, what I'm searching for is that I feel like, and I, I think of something like a, even like a windmill, which is actually not rotational power power as much as it is like rotational strength, right? right? But I think that that's important that we express that you want to have good rotational strength before you try and express oh, the yeah. power. Oh, yeah. So 100%. you need to really own and control the movement, doing things that like anti-rotational stuff, doing things like ro like windmills for rotational strength. So you have the ability to control in, in that plane really well. And then you can do things like medicine bell throws, wood chops, mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. that are more expressive to, to really... Yeah, you, you need to own... You need So strength contributes to this physical pursuit quite a bit, right? right? So if you just get stronger, you will increase your power um, somewhat, no matter what. No matter what you do, if you get stronger, you're going to get a little bit more powerful. Now, obviously, if you focus on power, you'll get a lot more powerful because power is a skill like anything else. But strength is the prerequisite, right? Yes. So don't go and do these fast rotational exercises if you're not strong in rotation because you're asking for trouble. Because when you apply speed, yeah. the risk goes through the roof in terms it's of injury. It's adding nitrous, you know, to the engine. It's it's something that you you, know, you have to really prepare the infrastructure to, be right. able to handle it. And so I think that's where a misconception happens because it is like a lot of the, the exercises people think of are strength exercises. Um, like if I'm if on a cable and I'm doing a trunk rotation, I'm – you know, the best form of that typically is to use it so you do add the anti-rotational elements to that too so I can slow down, be controlled. But when I'm just focusing on power, I'm ripping it and then I'm and, and then I'm composing myself again then I'm ripping it again. I love you use that example because I was actually just taking my client through that exact exercise and one of the things I was trying to get her to understand because when, when the client sees you do that movement and they just kind of look at the explosive part, but I'm trying to get her to uh, decelerate correctly, right? As, and and then stop in a controlled fashion and do that all with her core before we go back the other direction. And clients, they see the arms, and that's what they're all fo they're focused on. Like, oh, your arms go here, and then you stop here, and you can see you could see her shoulders kind of shrug and, and yeah. move out of position because she's not locking it in from her core and stabilizing there first before she yeah, goes well, back. Well, when you have mm -hmm. a cable or a band, you have to bring it back, right? When you have a mm -hmm. ball, you mm -hmm. can let go. So right. that's why the control is important when you have something you're still holding on to because yes. if you just let go and let it swing you back, you're going to probably hurt yourself. By the way, if you are going to use something that's anchored, uh, I prefer a band 
for explosive rotational movements. Mm-hmm. Way over a cable. With a cable, you got the weight stack that's flopping all over the place. Yeah, with it's, a band, it's clunky. Yeah, with a band, it's you explode, and then you can bring it back quickly, and it's not uh, as well, dangerous. Some of my favorite ones, and this is where I, you get all the Instagram type of exercises that actually make sense uh, for this, because you'll you'll get stuff like you know tire strikes you can do with uh, you know a sledgehammer uh, where you're getting really good uh, rotational explosive strength with your upper body and shoulders, and I can rotate slam it with all my might, and then basically you know I have to like redo that whole process all over again. I'm not dependent on bringing it back all under control. I can really exert a lot of so force. So both you take me through this, and okay, let's pretend like we have a client who who this person's asking for rotational power, but we're going to assume that they have limited rotational strength. So give me, you know, one or two exercises. I would get them first to get the the uh, rotational strength first and the control, and then one or two exercises that I like that you guys like to teach people to the for the power aspect. Oh man, aspect. you, you could keep it simple and do your regular cable chop to get strong, and then eventually mm-hmm. when they're stable and feel good, then you progress to a band and you go fast or a ball. So that's very simple. Right. You can get more complex. You could start with windmills and cable chops and then eventually move to uh, you know a ball where you're throwing it. Um, it's really about the progression, right? Mm-hmm. One is controlled. The other one is fast. Get good at the control first. Get good with the rotation of the strength first, then move to the speed. Yeah, and, and, and just some other examples like a kettlebell halo or even you do it with a with a um, dumbbell. And, and you can go through that, that pattern of rotation with your shoulders that a lot of times people just neglect. And so just getting your body familiar with a lot of the function of your joints with your shoulders, with your hips, and just getting that rotational uh, movement established and under control, uh, you know, that's a another good one and then where does something like uh indian clubs and mace bells fit into this whole thing right so once you get once you get good fluid movement and, and rotation out of the shoulders that's where we start loading uh that that same swinging rotation and so now i can add that and i would start like very uh you know slowly with with one to two pound type of um you know indian clubs and then take that through those same rotational movements so you get your internal external rotation uh you go through that full range of motion um, and then further on, you can actually get a little more uh, aggressive and, and fast with those swings too. So they can become more of, you know, a type of a power move. Now, would you put those kind of at the, the peak of the progression here? So like, I'm going to get my, you know, basic control and strength first, and then I'm going to do some band and cable type movements. And then, then I've got really good control. I've got really good strength and mobility. Mm-hmm. Now I'm ready to do something more dynamic and right. a, a sure. little more fluid with something like a mace bell or yeah. like so any. Indian club and then go to mace bell. I think yeah. mace bell is, you know, a bit of a jump uh, skill okay. wise yeah. from that, but I think it's it's super valuable uh, and something to consider that you can get bulletproof. You can get strong in in rotational uh, elements of of you know your shoulders as well.